the Missouri Lottery has some exciting news. So to make sure the commercial is as exciting as the promotions, we brought in a sound effects guy. Introducing the new one-off wager for pick three and pick four. Choose your numbers, and if they're within one of the winning numbers drawn, you're a winner. The best part of all, the one-off wager with pick three and pick four is only a dollar. But the excitement doesn't stop there. Wednesdays and Saturdays from June 19th to July 13th are draw day free play. Buy a $4 Powerball ticket and you'll receive a pick three ticket or pick four ticket with the one-off wager free. Still not enough excitement? How does bonus cash sound? With every pick three and pick four ticket you buy with the one-off wager, you have a chance to win bonus cash instantly. This is your summer to win, so play the new one-off wager with pick three and pick four today. Every ticket gives back to education, so play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. Ah, summertime. Barbecues, suntans, flip-flops, easy living. But are you ready? Signing up for class at SEC is on your to-do list, but you've got time, right? Well, fall will be here before you know it, and the next time you hear me, there'll be less time. And less time, and, well, you get it. Lucky for you, there's SCC. We'll help you through the whole process. Application, financial aid, class selection, then you'll be ready. Southeastern Community College, educating students and getting them ready since 1920. Semester starts August 19th. Are you ready? Well, today we see a 50% chance of a shower or a thunderstorm, and that's mainly after 4 this afternoon with partly sunny skies otherwise and a high near 92. Showers and thunderstorms are likely tonight. We see a 70% chance of rain, mostly cloudy skies, and a low of 72. This is the award-winning broadcast of Healthy University, bringing health and vitality to you and your family, brought to you by Scotland County Hospital in Memphis. Now, here's your host, Dr. Randy Tobler. Doctor, my eyes have seen the Good morning. Welcome to Healthy You. I'm Dr. Randy Tobler. Thanks for being with us, along with Bud Wilson, still back from assignment, and producer Elisa Kiger, who is yeah. splitting time between here and fair, right? Yeah, Very busy. I, I was out at the fair this morning. We, we uh-huh. were setting up our booth. We're going to be out there every evening starting uh-huh. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's and right. um, so if you want to stop out by the art hall, we have a booth out there. And I got this beautiful oh, uh, blue wrist look tag. Look at you. Um, they were putting it on me at the gate, and I said, you know what? This is kind of like being admitted to one of those peaceful cove drug withdrawal places, you know, <laughs> where, you, where you get the little <laughs> bracelet, they put it on you, and, it, and you're in peaceful tranquility yeah. by uh-huh. enjoyment harbor, you yeah. know, recuperating, I... withdrawing from methamphetamine. <laughs> Beautiful anyway. Memphis estates. <laughs> I never thought of Fair Week as peaceful tranquility, no. I'll have to admit. <laughs> uh, no, so, things are really, really going good. I just went, I got to go by this morning and saw the rides. Now, most of the rides are already set up, but there are a couple of three of them that haven't been set up yet. They really look like good stuff. Really? I'm anxious to get the kids down there and give it a well, shot. that'll be fun, yeah. I haven't done that in a long time. I, last time was when we took the kids to Disney. I did any rides. I may have you're to in the gap. talk my wife into doing that. You're in the gap, doctor. You, oh, I've been in the gap kids. for a long time. <laughs> Ask my wife. I'm your in such a gap. Are, your kids are too big for the Ferris wheel. Yeah. You don't have grandkids yet. No. So you're in the gap. But I you sort of like those thrill-seeking adventure hang upside down rides. <laughs> I like those. You do, don't yeah, you? I yeah. know you do. Yeah, it's good. Does Elisa do the rides? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm the only one in the family that does the rides. My husband big does Jim not won't, even, Big no. tough Jim won't do the he, rides? He won't even climb to the top of the grain bin. Ask <laughs> Chuck Kiger about that. <laughs> okay, a little inside family story <laughs> here. All right. right. <laughs> well, I don't know whether Jim was glad we shared that. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I do, there are a couple of things I wanted to mention, Doug, just right here at the start of the show. Uh uh, that have to do with things going on at the hospital and one is the in the ob department there's going to be free prenatal classes again that's going to be um two nights july 29th and 30th 
And each evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., uh, moms, soon-to-be moms, and your entire family, you're all welcome. This is absolutely free. There's no charge whatsoever. Please register by calling the OB, and that's 465-8511. Uh, and um, <clears throat> there's, there's no fee for this, and you do not have to deliver or be planning to no. deliver in, in, at Scotland County Hospital in order to take this class because we want you to have the class. It's a really neat class. It tells you all kinds of things uh, about um, getting ready for the event. I remember my daughter called from Pensacola, Florida the day she was released to come home from mm -hmm. the hospital, and she was at the house. She called us on the phone and said, <laughs> Dad? Help! Ah. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and this these things like these classes will will give people um, just you know some some really good ideas um, about just some real common ordinary things that when you first get home that you don't think about you know right. like you know how do I get the baby to feed all just yeah. all kinds of things how do yeah, I so give the baby a bath so we really start how do I hold it yeah so we start of. from any anxiety producing questions and issues all the way from late pregnancy questions when do i know to come to the hospital right. and of course your doctor will talk to you about sure. that but um you know try to allay some fears and anxieties yeah. and sort of get a virtual experience as far as what it's Absolutely. like once you come in Absolutely. and the delivery process you get to meet some of the some of the crew and cast of the yep. uh, ob department the and you there will be there by the bedside yeah and including yeah. anesthesia who's always the most mm -hmm. popular yes. whether that's sally <laughs> or bob or michael yes, they are always the stars of the show <laughs> I'll take Pain relief. Double. Yeah. <laughs> Give me twice. The hero. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, Dr. Anyway. Tobler, remind me how many, we have such a robust medical yes. staff that delivers babies. What are we up to in terms of staff? Five. That is okay. Wow. Five there is uh, Dr. Cormier, of course, whose office, One. Bridget over in Cahoka, okay. who delivers here. We have, and our staff uh, at MMS, so that's mm -hmm. Dr. Jennings, Three. our newest addition, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Hoyle, Dr. Davis. Five. And then me. And you. Six. Yeah. Wow. Holy cow. And then Dr. Thome and Dr. Miller Parrish do C sections when I'm not sure. here. Absolutely. So they, they cover do. that. So we have yeah. a lot of people delivering babies. And yeah. so we want to tell everybody again July 29th and 30th at the hospital. It's in the evening from 7 to 9. There's no fee. All you have to do mm -hmm. is call in. You don't have to deliver at Scotland County Hospital. There will be a free tour of the facilities while you're here. Mm -hmm. And refreshments, I'm sure, will be provided. And Q&A. So bring your questions. And you know, there's always oh, uh, some absolutely. issue that you know is really bothering you, keeping you up at night, if it's your first baby especially. But even if it's been a while, or if it's not been a while, maybe you've delivered at a different facility. Yeah. And you'd like to know what it's like at ours yeah. you know we've talked to you about sure. that. you know and i'm glad you mentioned that because bud and i have been in on a couple of things in the last couple of months when a um potential ob patient is trying to decide which facility to mm -hmm. deliver at because mm -hmm. there are lots of opportunities yeah. mm -hmm. in the area yes. and so we've had different staff call us mm -hmm. and say we have an ob patient potentially would consider delivering here could you or bud give them a tour someday when they're you know, uh, in the area, or perhaps even uh, the one that we've got coming up, I believe, is your patient, and uh, that person wants a personal tour yeah. after her doctor's appointment sure. that day. And so. you know, one of the good things about that is it's like your first day at work mm -hmm. in a way. You're you have a chance to come here, look at where you're going to be if mm -hmm. you choose to do so, and the facilities that are there firsthand, so that it's not going to be totally brand new to you mm -hmm. the the day you're in there d delivering and doing a lot of other things that really don't have anything mm -hmm. to do with acclimating to the facility but <laughs> <laughs> and, and when the doctors when all yeah. those five if you do have your doctor here when they you know are going to order an ultrasound or they're going to order blood work you know how all that process works where you get registered for mm -hmm. that and all that type of um, sort of housekeeping and bud and i are glad to give those tours Absolutely. I, I punted one to bud for in a couple of weeks because i'm yeah not and having involved. delivered in a lot of places you know and worked in several hospitals i can tell you that um uh, we can we can provide really the best of both worlds in terms of the high tech when it's needed to help stabilize a problem patient or a problem baby yep. um or uh, but at the same time very you know one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. small 
unit feel too. Yeah. Sometimes big OB units get to be intimidating because it, they they feel more like an ICU type of a situation. Right. I and so it's a very homesy. The, yeah, I'd like to take them on the tour. Yeah, because it's a lot of fun. They, they ooh and ah when they mm-hmm. see all the stuff we have. Now, do you personally demonstrate the jacu- the whirlpool <laughs> bath, or do you uh, know how's that work? I, I have not done that because oh. I'm not trying to scare people away. <laughs> that would that would push them off to other facilities. No doubt yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. No, Speaking I, I of baths like and water and things like that, yeah. and butt in a speedo, Ooh, God help scary. us. Scary. Um, the the uh, I don't know if the mermaids are going to be out today based on weather, but maybe Tuesdays yeah. and Thursdays, right? Yep. Tuesdays and Thursdays at eleven. Eleven right? to eleven forty-five is the physical therapy staff yep. direct some water aerobics, Absolutely. and you can you can carve out and do your individualized program, and they'll sort of supervise different levels of of experience and capacity Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. So, so it's a lot of fun. to get the Speedo on and get over there. Oh, I... man. Yeah, yeah, we, that's why we allow a whole hour <laughs> between now and then. <laughs> the other thing I did want to mention, yeah. Doctor, is that we have a, a, a lunch and learn with uh, Nemo Doc Diabetes and Obesity mm-hmm. Center that will be coming up. And uh, we wanted to welcome our cardiac rehab clients along to mm-hmm. that event. It's, uh, well, let's see, Thursday, July 28th so we'll oh, talk I'm about sorry. that more actually it's going to be it's the july 18th oh, i have the wrong no, I'm date sorry. on there so that's next week oh. next thursday <laughs> yeah next, next thursday <laughs> lunch and learn yep you bring the lunch they bring the lunch they bring, bring their your own lunch. byol byol, lunch. byol. Yeah. Be y'all <laughs> all right coming up adam bruner a north what is this northeast regional what is this n-r-e-m-t paramet what does n-r-e-m-t mean national register Ooh. Yeah. Wow, I'll have it's to learn about it's all these certifications. Yes, sir, we'll fix you up. Wow, there's more alphabet soup behind his name than there are illegal aliens in the country. Okay, <laughs> paramedic and supervisor of the uh, EMS service here. We'll talk to him about summer problems, a little bit about his background, because it's pretty intriguing. Yep. It's a little James Bond-like, well, yep. sort of. Absolutely. Adam Bruner coming up here on Healthy You. Stay there. No. You and I. Are just like couples of pots Running around the meadow Picking up all those forget-me-lots You make me feel so young You make me feel there are songs to be sung Bells to be rung And a wonderful thing to be flung And even when I'm moving play I'm gonna feel the way I do today Cause you make me feel so young You make me young Oh, oh yeah You make me feel that spring I can always depend on Bud on a gloomy day to provide us with some upbeat bumper music Is this off a... Older or newer Michael Bublé? Oh, that's a uh, that's not a new one. God, that's good. Yeah. Do you like that better Vintage. than the? I I don't know if I like the, him better than the Sinatra version. Sinatra's hard to beat. That's well, good. it's interesting that you should say that because there's some others that we'll be having mm-hmm. t- in today's show. That oh, really? Are Sin- that were oh. that were Sinatra. So they're covers on Sinatra tunes. Good. Yeah. Wonder if Adam sings any? Do you? Do you sing in the shower, Adam Bruner, as you're getting ready to come to your high-risk and high-stress job at Scotland County um, Hospital as the paramedic supervisor of the EMS not department? At all, not at all, but I would have to agree with you that I would probably care for Sinatra's version uh, yeah. uh, better myself. Yeah, but Buble's not bad. No, no, no not, bad. not at all. Not so, at all. Adam, welcome to the program, and uh, we're so welcome. glad that you're joining us today. Thanks so much. Uh, Adam couldn't join us in studio because, you know, when you're the EMS guy, you never know where you're going to be at any <laughs> given moment. You can be sitting at your desk doing administrative stuff and making schedules and planning educational things, or, you know, you may be out on a run. So uh, thanks for joining us by phone this morning. Tell us a little bit about Adam Bruner. Where do you hail from, and uh, what did you do in a previous life? Well, originally, um, I'm from Queen City, Missouri, here, um, and I currently uh, live in Kirksville with my uh, wife of 10 years, Dawn, and I um, started in the emergency medical services in 1992, um, working actually as a uh, dispatcher, um, an emergency medical services dispatcher, and the bug kind of got me. It, uh, I planned to 
do emergency medical services mainly as a job for college to make extra money. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The bug kind of bit me. Um, went to EMT school, emergency medical technician school in 1993. Um, started working full time. Took a break from college, of course, to uh, work EMS. As I said, the bug had kind of bitten me. Right. And um, then in 1996, I enrolled at Hannibal LaGrange College, and there I did complete um, and finish up with a uh, paramedic license, a um, Missouri paramedic license. So that's a little bit about my emergency medical services education. Um, and in 1996, I did start working full-time as a paramedic, working mainly in northeast Missouri at different um, ambulance services. I spent the good majority of my uh, career working ground ambulance, doing emergency uh, calls and um, emergency critical care transfer um, transfers from hospital to hospital with the Adair County Ambulance District. Um, spent approximately oh, three to four years working emergency in the emergency department as a paramedic at, uh, yeah, this will date me just a little bit, at uh, Kirksville um, Osteopathic Medical Center. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's working at uh, KOMC is when I had the opportunity to uh, meet Dr. Elliot Hicks, who is the medical director for the Scotland County Hospital Ambulance Service. Um, Dr. Hicks and I worked many years together there at uh, KOMC, became good friends at the time. Um, and, uh, and like I said, in my career took me in 2004. I started working as a uh, flight paramedic for AeroVac Life Team and flew in numerous different locations throughout uh, Iowa and Missouri for AeroVac for uh, uh, for a few years. And then um, AeroVac snatched me up in a different role, and I started working in, in, in administration mm-hmm. for them. Um, spent five or six years doing that and primarily running the day-to-day operations of different uh, locations for AeroVac Life Team in Missouri. And um, then, as most people do, you know, you start looking to maybe branch back out, maybe get back to your roots a little bit. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. In other words, you can only push a pencil for so long. <laughs> well, that, that's true. That is true. You can only, um, <laughs> what is the expression my dad always used? You can only, only just shine the, uh, the, the chair with your rear end for so long. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, yeah. No, and I mean, if you're the EMS people, I found are just a different breed, and I mean that in a in a special and complimentary way. Um, they tend to be thrill seekers. They tend to be risk takers, um, but they tend to be highly uh, jazzed by the the action and the help and the reward and the fulfillment that you get out of all that excitement. And it oh. and, and I mean, it's just hard to you can't. I don't care. I don't care if you were at some federal branch, you know, the, 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 some cabinet member in the president's cabinet. It's not the same as doing the job in, in the field, is it? Oh, absolutely. You, you're 100% correct. Um, you alluded a little bit to the type of people that um, um, comprise an EMS service, and I've got to tell you that um, they are the uh, high-speed, um, <laughs> yeah. high-grade personality. Yeah, yeah. That you, you know. And, you know, the, the, the profession, the career demands such right. a person. Oh, yeah. Because, um, you know, you never know what your day is going to bring you. Yeah, you're not going to have someone who was a psychiatrist, you know, go into EMS. Uh, let me see, Shugman, how is, what is, what's bleeding right now? You know, lie down on my couch. No, you don't do that. This is like, no, no, no. This is like yeah. action, action, action. Every, every minute is like a Jackie Chan film, right? I mean, it's just yeah. bad news. Pretty well. You pretty well have to be able to think on your feet. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of people out there in the world, and my, my wife kind of teases me a little bit, that I'm not a planner. And <laughs> the, the, the Join the crowd. Is, yeah, I yeah, know what you mean. The reason for that is uh, working in emergency medical services for so long is you can't have a plan because as soon as you have a plan, mm-hmm. something happens <laughs> and changes your ent- entire uh, what, what you're going to be doing. And therefore, it just kind of it's just best to not have a plan and to just 
kind of go along with the flow. Let's talk a little bit about the resources that you work with now at Scotland County Hospital and our emergency medical services department, which is robust not only in its human resources, but also in the capital resources and the, and the equipment that you work with. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Um, and, of course, we have a fairly large service area for a small hospital as well, so um, certainly have, have met, the, met the demand there. But it's, uh, it's really an up-to-date and, and very well-maintained and highly technical uh, bunch of resources that you work with, right? Oh, absolutely. And that's, that was one of the draws that got me here to Scotland County Hospital was that, uh, as I said earlier, that you know, when I started looking around for maybe my next challenge in my career, um, I was approached by uh, some of the folks there at Scotland County Hospital, uh, um, Ms. Marcia Dial in particular, and Dr. Elliot Hicks. And, uh, you know, at first I was like, eh, maybe, maybe it's just a little too far away from where I live. But, you know, when I got over there and I really started to become familiar um, with the service and some of the equipment and some of the protocols that, um, that the Scotland County Ambulance System um, service enjoys, I really got very interested, um, and I wanted to know more. <laughs> so some of, the, some of the things that we have for such a small service are just really realistically unheard of. Um, we have uh, a beautiful facility. Um, hopefully most people do not have to um, go to the emergency department <laughs> regularly, <laughs> but realistically, it, it's for the size of the hospital, for the size of the area, being a small critical access hospital, the emergency department is just gorgeous. It really is. Um, and staffed I mean, staffed with three full-time ER docs, which is amazing. I mean, you know, Dr. Oh Hicks is, a, of course, a consummate ER professional, well-known in the area, and board-certified uh, board emergency. E- emergency medicine doc. Yeah. And, of course, then we have uh, Dr. Keller and, and of course, Dr. Uh, Quinneville as well, yeah. Ken Quinneville. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that's a very, very, I mean, it's really nice to know. I can tell you from the practitioner standpoint, and I have so many patients tell me, wow, how nice it is to have that safety net. Because mm-hmm. so many communities mm-hmm. with small hospitals, they have what they call an emergency room, but it's really sort of staffed by people who are maybe not uh, specifically emergency trained. Yes, they do their best with what they can, but, I mean, between getting them to the hospital through the resources that you provide in your service, the EMS department, as well as then the, the, the professional component, the doctor and nurse, and, of course, we, we shouldn't forget Thelma Norton as well, supervisor of Absolutely. the staff there. Man, it's just a well-oiled machine. And in terms of triaging people, getting them either into the hospital where they need for further treatment or getting them out of the hospital to a tertiary center where they need higher-order treatment, uh, there's none better. No, no. Realistically, like you said, for the size of the for the size of the community and the size of the hospital, um, I was impressed. During my tenure with uh, Arivac, I had the opportunity to fly into uh, numerous hospitals in southern Iowa, northern and central Missouri. Um, and for the size of the hospital and the size of the emergency department, it's just it's just amazing to me how well the the staff are trained. How good of equipment they have. Uh, most hospitals of our size are not staffed 24 hours a day with no. a registered nurse, um, and LPNs, and uh, paramedics and EMTs, and most of them are not even staffed uh, 24 hours a day with a, with a physician, let alone a physician who is board certified in emergency medicine, as you know, Dr. Hicks is. Um, a lot of the times, if a patient comes into an emergency department of that size, They'll call one of the nurses off the floor from the medical surgical um, mm-hmm. wing or call a physician in from home. But, you know, right here, if a patient walks in, a patient that is emergent, a patient that has a time-critical illness such as stroke, trauma, cardiac, you know, they can rest assured that right immediately trained people who are trained in emergency care can be right there with them. And I love to talk shop with the docs because, you know, I, I think that the, the half-life of information in women's health is fast. Well, I think it may be even faster and more changeable and more uh, just, uh, you know, roller coaster. Sometimes new things appear and then, oh, that's not. They stay on top of it up there, and it's just fun to listen to them talk about uh, what's up, uh, you know, in the, in the world of the latest, greatest treatment. Um, and, of course, we have some nice affiliations with uh, Quincy in terms of getting people yeah. up to the cardiac cath lab right away or for treatment of uh, other problems. Adam, can you hang with us? I'd like to talk a little bit about 
the airline crash that happened uh, over the weekend and some of the unique spine injuries they were seeing and maybe some advice because sadly we will see um, trauma. You see that mm-hmm. uh, all too often. Um, and we'd like to talk about maybe some summer uh, emergency type uh, precautions and, yeah. and care that people need to look out for. Is that all right? Oh, absolutely. All right. Adam Bruner, the uh, paramedic, of course, and the supervisor of the emergency medical uh, service department at Scotland County Hospital, joins us by phone today on Healthy You. If you have a question, the number is 465 2828 and 1 800 That's Bud, along with Elisa. I'm Dr. Randy Tobler. We are Healthy University. We'll be back. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In biology, I learned that I'm fat. I'm stupid. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. The only thing I didn't learn in school today is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. The odds of this fastballing philanthropist winning the World Series three times, one in three million. The odds of this man having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Hi, I'm Kurt Schilling. Learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Other arms reach out to me. Other eyes smile tenderly. Still in peaceful dreams I see. Oh, peace I find Just an old sweet song Old sweet song Georgia on my Welcome back to the program. 29 till the hour as we roll along here on Healthy You this morning. Waiting for a little more rain, I guess, today as uh, there's a clash of... Uh, high front and a low front coming in. I guess it's going to cool down then over the next couple of days. That would be good for all of those who have livestock stock yes. exhibits at the fair. Yes. And yeah. we're going to get rid of the rain today and then the rest of the week should be re- pretty nice for the fair, correct? Good. I, I, I have hope not so. looked at the, the forecast, well, but that's a good Rick hope. promised me that he was going to bring us pretty good weather for the fair. So, And if Rick says it, it's true. Adam Bruner <laughs> joins us, and if he says it about emergency medical type stuff, it's true as well. He's the supervisor of the... Uh, EMS uh, department there in the, the EMS service, uh, along with Dr. Hicks, who's the emergency medical services director, and then Thelma Norton, who's the nurse supervisor of the emergency department as well. I remember the first time I saw Adam, he was here uh-huh. as an instructor, and um, we have all kinds of um, information and certifications mm-hmm. that are that are timely, but also constant and continuous uh some of them are even on a yearly basis mm-hmm. and you have uh, ALS ACLS PHTLS and TNCC and all just on and on and on all kinds of critical training and it's pretty intense because it, it's usually a day or two days and that's how I remember seeing Adam for the mm-hmm. first yeah, time yeah. And he's been here many many times to uh yeah. as an instructor mm-hmm. yeah and, uh, we have a bunch of really, really great professionals. And Adam, I know you've uh, you've enjoyed getting to know the crew there. And I have to tell you, mm-hmm. I, I do want to give a shout out there to you and, and Jason, who had a big hand in planning the event again this year, and all of the people who came out, many of them off the clock, donating their time yeah. for the Kids Safety Day, uh, what, about a month ago? Yeah, that was awesome. And uh, I mean, I was up there and hanging out and just taking in the whole spectacle of it all. It was quite, quite a thing. And mm-hmm. of course, the fire department is there, police department, sheriff. It was a wonderful, wonderful event. And and um, I think that speaks to the passion um, of, of a group of people who would love nothing more than to never be called out, yeah. right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, and you, you talked about um, ch- Children's Safety Day there in Memphis, um, the second annual. Um, I, I do want to just give a huge pat on the back to um, the crew 
of Scotland County Hospital Ambulance that really put a ton of time into planning this event. Yes, they did. Also, the uh, other employees of the other hospital departments who all came together, as you said, and gave up their time to um, teach children some very safe and effective uh, mm-hmm. ways that they can use in their day-to-day life to be safe. And, and it couldn't have happened without the uh, help from Jason Moss. I mean, he really was mm-hmm. the uh, go-to guy. I came into my position there right at when this was, uh, it was either going to happen or not happen. And Jason was like, what do you want to do with this? And I said, you know what, Jason, it's it's your baby. You run with it. And he did an outstanding job. Yeah, he really Couldn't did. have happened without Jason. And it's really, I hope it becomes a an annual event and a trendsetter and an example setter for other communities around. Because uh, as, far, as far as I know, it's a relatively unique event. and um, It is, and there's oh, a huge bunch you, of things. You guys ought to franchise that, you yeah. know what I mean? Because it's really mm-hmm. something. <laughs> not to yeah, mention, it really is. And, and another thing, we could not have done it without the help of the community either. There's right. so many that's businesses right. who right. gave up that's their, right. their, that's right. their time and financial support for it. Also, yeah. well, that's the way things work here. It's uh, usually a that cast is. of cast of thousands that contribute. <laughs> that is yeah. true. Uh, let's talk a little bit about kids' safety and adult safety and the type of summer type things that you get called for, and maybe some tips to try to help avoid them. Okay. Yeah. Sure. You know, one of the big ones when you think about summertime. Um, safety is heat-related illnesses, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, we were talking about maybe it'll cool down a little bit for the fair, <laughs> but, as, you know, everybody's out there at the fair. You've got to be really mindful of the heat and what your body is capable and what it's not capable of. Being out of direct sunlight, if possible, um, trying to stay in air conditioning, you know, if the, if the heat index and the humidity are so high, also keeping very well hydrated with fluids. And when I say staying hydrated with fluids, I don't necessarily mean the adult kind either. (laughs) 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 Excuse me. As as summertime heat. Yeah, that O'Doul's, that'll really get you. You drink too much uh, of that O'Doul's, that'll get you. (laughs) Absolutely. When when summertime heats up, you know, it's not just a fair that people get out to. They have their uh, barbecues, uh, other outdoor events. And like I said, just staying mindful of the heat and everything in moderation. The one of the things that we get called to often in summertime is it's nice weather. Everybody wants to go out and play, adults, children alike, um, and just what, like we like to say in EMS, just using common sense. Um, sometimes people um, take for granted the limitations of themselves or some of the equipment they may be playing with. Um, if you're using an all-terrain vehicle, bicycles, whatever, use the proper safety equipment, um, seat belts in your car. Be mindful if we're out there on the farm and putting up hay that, you know, it's not just a heat-related illness that could get to you. Your body could be overextended, and um, and you just never know what can happen with an injury or an illness. Yeah, I know. I You, you hear from time to time of uh, someone getting caught up in their PTO with a loose piece of clothing yeah. or... You know, uh, a, a, a dangle on a... It happens more in the cold weather, I guess, with little, you know, ties on mm-hmm. sweaters and hoods and so forth. But, boy, mm-hmm. it doesn't take much for you to get in big trouble. And I think it's that combination. If you think about it, if you look at your own life, the only the only times I've ever gotten in trouble in terms of hurt myself generally have been when I'm tired, right? Mm-hmm. And right. I'm in a hurry, right? Mm-hmm. Though that, right. Is the, that is like a deadly combination. Yeah. You, I do the most stupid things because you lose your judgment then. And that's when we're thinking about it at the very least. It's like nitrogen narcosis yes. when you're diving. You it know, is. you just lose it your is. judgment. Yeah. And so that's why it's helpful. I, I found when I'm out working the other day, my wife and I were out clearing trails. We hadn't done it in a year. And I mean, it was hot. And by about the third hour, I don't get thirsty when I'm working. I don't know how many people of you are like that. I just, I forget to drink stuff. And she says... Now, that was a stupid thing to do. I said, what do you mean? She says, you didn't put the brake on the chainsaw when you were done with that last limb. She'd noticed that I had been doing that. And I said, oh, you're right. And she says, you're looking a little red in the face. Drink this. I said, oh, that's okay. I'll get it. She said, nope, we're not going another step farther to you. Drink this. And so it might be helpful to have a buddy with you when you're working, whether you're young or old or experienced or not, so that you can keep an eye on one another. And, and if something does happen, if you guys don't get the call from a buddy because someone else is out and you're by yourself, you're not going to be able to answer anyway. Absolutely. We cannot answer the call unless somebody makes that call to begin with. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah and, and, you know, you, you talk about you're, you haven't, people are out clearing brush and out working on the farm. And, you know, sometimes 
a good majority of the times, it is the more experienced people. Mm-hmm. It's the people that have been doing this the longest. Mm-hmm. They or, get know, complacent. Whatever their occupation is the longest, that they have an accident or an illness, specifically yeah. heat-related, because they're so comfortable with it. Yeah, they get and complacent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Right. So, uh, yeah, I always recommend drink a liter of water, a quart of water, before you go out. Guzzle before and at least a, a, a liter every hour when you're out, if you can. Yeah. You know, and, sure. uh, that's important. Well, Adam, I want to thank you for spending the time with us today. And, uh, again, we want to uh, thank you for serving the area and uh, showing leadership there at the hospital with the emergency medical service and the ambulance department in particular. Um, anything else you'd like to say as far as, uh, you know, a shout-out to anyone out there in the audience? Is your wife listening today? <laughs> Uh, she's not, unfortunately. She's working today, but uh, I would just like to to tell everybody in the South there listening that they can have confidence in the uh, the uh, staff of the Scotland County Ambulance Service, Scotland County Hospital Ambulance Service. We're staffed 24 hours a day with advanced life support personnel and equipment. And um, once again, like I said, for a for an area and a service that is as small as us, some of our people are some of the highest trained. Um, best equipped people out there and they should feel very very happy to have confidence in us when called Adam on a personal note we are thrilled that you chose Scotland County Hospital for Mm -hmm. this career change you're not going to get away and off the radio today without us wishing you a happy birthday not today (laughs) really thank you you. today is the day he is much older than me but I do know who he is (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, at least I believe turned 29 on her last. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> well, that's that's kind of you to spend time with us. See, that that shows the servant's heart. And mm-hmm. that is does. Adam Brumer, Bruner and uh, the type of person he Happy is. Happy birthday, friend. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot. And listen, I will give you a pass to go ahead and have an adult beverage, but just one on this special day, okay? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, Adam. Look forward Thank to working you. with you more. All right. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's uh, talk about a few interesting stories that have come over the wires and uh, open up the phone lines. We don't get to do that a whole Absolutely. lot. Absolutely. Four six five two eight two eight is the local number. And one eight hundred seven. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Did I give the wrong you number? You can call seven two two five four six five seven two two five. I'm giving the clinic number. We'll call the clinic and make an appointment for they've been, whatever they've been ails getting you. phone calls over there. Hey, I got a new egg. Yeah. Where am Seven two two five. Right. Yes, yes and thinking? 1-800-748-7875. <laughs> Give us a call. Anything you want to talk about, we're here for you. I got another slam on smoking when you're pregnant when we come uh, back. Okay. And who doesn't know someone who's pregnant? A good friend, a daughter, a sister, a mom, you know? Yeah. And, you know, maybe they've been trying. Well, yeah. this is the time to absolutely shut the door yep. on the smoking thing. Yes, it is. Another story coming out about prenatal smoking. We'll be back. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent, one in 260,000. The odds of him having 15 career NASCAR victories, one in 1.7 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 110. I'm Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. I was leaving an exercise class. All of a sudden, the pain started. My entire chest, shortness of breath, very fatigued, nauseated. Thought that it was nothing much, maybe just stress. You're having a heart attack. I'm healthy, I'm young. There's no way it can be my heart. No way. Heart disease doesn't discriminate. Listen to your body. Go get checked. Heart disease is the number one killer in women, and this is something that we can fight. Visit GoRedForWomen.org to learn a woman's risk for heart disease.
So you've probably maybe echoed those words of that tune when you've started a diet or when you've wanted to stop smoking. Yeah. Right? It's a new day, new dawn. This yep. is the day. Yeah. Well, I have probably the most successful rate of smoking cessation. It's not because of me. It's because of what patients learn and think. And suddenly they have that aha moment is when uh, a woman gets pregnant. Yeah. And many times they will embrace that as an opportunity to stop smoking yes. forever because they have some sense. We've talked about it. Doctors talk about it. Everyone knows yeah. it's not good for anyone. It's especially not good when you're now sharing that with your yeah. unborn child, right? Yeah, you're not the only one anymore. And so we know that um, it's linked to premature birth. We know it's linked to low weight, mm -hmm. underdevelopment, asthma yep. in kids. Um, now a connection has been made between smoking in pregnancy. This even includes early on and then you quit. I mean, you know, you don't know you're pregnant, you're smoking and you quit. So even brief exposure during the early first trimester mm -hmm. uh, can result to hearing loss in adolescence. Wow. Uh, this is according to a new study in, uh, from the Journal of the American Medical Association in their Ear, Nose, and Throat Journal, Otolaryngology. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Michael Weltzman, study author and professor at New York University School of Medicine, really, he sort of parses his words carefully. He subtly says, cigarette smoking is probably the worst man-made epidemic. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm -hmm. So we'd like to oh, have him right. clarify where he stands. Yeah. Sugar uh, is the second. <laughs> just exactly what do you mean by that? And it turns out that most of the mothers in the particular sample uh, quit smoking in the first trimester. So this would prove that even brief encounters have negative effects. Yeah. And they found that, um, you know, we don't know what the deal is here. Is it a direct effect? Is it something maybe that smoking mothers and then the environments that those kids grow up in? You know, we're not mm -hmm. sure it's definitely the smoking, but it appears to be the in utero effect. And they turned out that it turns out that they could lose up to three decibels of hearing as adolescents. Now wow. you, now you pile on a little. You know, my mom smoked while I was inside her growing, and I like to go to rock concerts, and I like my earbuds turned up real mm. loud. And I drive a tractor. And I drive a tractor, Without and I never wear my and I shoot guns because guns are fun, and I, who needs the hearing protection, right? Yeah. And you can see how there's really an epidemic of hearing loss. And we've talked with people here on the air, and uh, maybe that'd be another show to reprise at some point is, um, you know, the epidemic of hearing loss yes. in our country. Um, yes. I've got hearing loss because I, I played, too. I was in the band business, played a brass instrument, and I was right behind, right in front of the trumpet section and right next to the loudspeaker yeah. and next to the drummer on the other side. And I mean, to tell you, I've, I've lost yeah. my, I hate when I go out with my hunting buddies and they say, oh, did you hear the quail calling? I'm going... I can barely hear you talking to me, <laughs> much less the quail calling. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I regret that, you know. So yeah. I'm, I guess I'm a little more sensitive to hearing loss than others may be. But I'm telling you, it's a big deal. Yeah. And um, you don't want to set your kids there, up for that. Not only is there hearing loss in the form of, of, of just a, a loss that um, uh, in your ability to hear certain decimals, mm -hmm. but a lot of people, I know I do, have a, a huge amount of ringing going oh, on do you have that too? in your ear. And wow. so well, here's your choices. You either figure out a way to get used to it, mm -hmm. or else they do have some things now that they yeah. can use that... Uh, actually match the tone uh, uh huh sort of like the noise canceling headphones mm, yeah. yeah i'll be darned yeah. have you used those no huh now i've heard I, that I got used to it it's word has it down at time, yeah down at the watering hole the word has it that it's only on saturday and sunday mornings that you have the ringing in your earbud what does this mean <laughs> well, I guarantee you it's there all the time. I'm kidding you. <laughs> so at any rate, this is this again is another example of one of those epigenetic phenomenon that yeah. we talked about where maternal habits and lifestyle choices can influence yes. the baby for for the life sure. term, right? Among I mean, we talked about the other things. Right. We know. talked about how mom putting on too much weight or starting at a high weight can influence the baby's risk of having diabetes well, or being obese. You stack that up obese. with the congenital things that it could that, that could be going on there and and um, it's a it's there's a lot there to consider. Uh for the new birth uh, and new babes and all the different things that they might be susceptible to. Yeah. We didn't get a chance to talk with Adam about the airline crash, but there was an interesting story that came out about the fact that there were different spinal injuries yeah, that they're reporting that. now. And I guess it had to do with the fact that the belts, it was like a, was it a whiplash of the spine, basically, of that basically bent over, then flying over the belt and then backward or something. I don't know. I, I would, I would, I don't know. 
first of all. The answer is I don't know. But but you you think about uh, whiplash and you think about there being two injuries with that, one forward and then mm-hmm. one backwards. Mm-hmm. And then you think about things like, I don't know if that was the case with them or not, but, mm-hmm. but about uh, concussions because you have the brain inside the skull mm-hmm. hitting the front of the skull and yes. then rebounding and hitting the back of the skull. Mm-hmm. And so just you get, all kinds of stuff going on. You know what those are called? What, what's you get called? coup and contra-coup yeah. injury, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like what happened in Egypt. That's a different kind of a coup. <laughs> different kind of a coup. <laughs> and did you hear about the hysteria over listeria? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cheese? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how to interpret this story. My analysis of it is that the media loves when natural foods have a clink, a ding, you know, when, oh, yeah. they, when they get a dent in their armor. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm really, in, I'm a supporter of natural foods. And as you know, eating as close to the ground as we can. And I don't mean, you know, eating on a short stool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, trying to, <laughs> everyone sit now with your legs crossed, be close to the ground. What I mean is eating close to the natural source without a lot of processing. Yeah. And um, so Whole Foods uh, recalled uh, a couple of kinds of cheeses that were apparently contaminated with a bug called Listeria monocytogenes. And that's, in my field, is, a, is like a real you know, cataclysmic deal because there's a many-fold increased risk if a woman, a pregnant woman gets it of miscarriage. Yeah. It causes abortions in cows, too. Oh. And, um, but, you know, you, how much cheese is sold through Whole Foods and other natural food outlets throughout the nation, and pe- not even at an at a established retailer? I mean, yeah. we're talking farmer to customer and farmer to farmer and farmers who eat their own cheese they make. And they, sure. how much, I'll wonder, that probably is far outweighs the cheese that's sold from the pasteurized mm-hmm. stuff. I don't yeah. know. But it can give especially susceptible people like pregnant people, the very young, the immune suppressed. Uh, it's sort of like Legionnaire's disease. You know, I mean, yeah, you'll get a flu-like syndrome and get a headache and throw up and feel sick for a few days yeah. if you're immunocompetent and well. Uh, but if you have a chronic disease, you know, that's th- these type of bugs Stacks tend to be oppor- opportunistic. Yeah. And um, so it can be a problem, but... I don't know. What is there? 20, 30 people, I guess. It was sold in 30 states, and mm-hmm. there's been a few cases reported. Yeah. Um, you can also find it in ready to eat deli meats and hot dogs. Mm-hmm. I have patients asking mm-hmm. me all the time, you know, should I not eat bologna if I'm pregnant? Oh. I think if you get it from a reputable source and it's not sitting in your refrigerator for weeks, you know, you what should mean? never <laughs> give the advice to never eat bologna. That's I, right up well, there with I, There's I other reasons sure. not to eat bologna. No <laughs> bologna. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I don't know. There's better things to do to a meat than make it into bologna. Ooh, but with a big slice of Colby cheese and fresh bread, what's better on a Would that be white bread after? or would that be nice whole grain no, bread? No, grab all the carbs you can, <laughs> my theory. <laughs> Refrigerated oh, pâtés or meat spreads. Sliced ham or sliced turkey. And yeah. Unpasteurized raw milk and dairy products, of course. Soft cheese made with unpasteurized milk such as queso feta brie or camembert oh i love camembert and brie oh refrigerated smoked seafood so like uh you know smoked salmon or trout i guess right and raw sprouts so like the alfalfa sprout craze and all that you know i guess that can be a problem so if you're in one of these risk groups i mean you may want to avoid things like that and go ahead and get them pasteurized um i guess everything in life is risk and benefit there's a lot of benefit to whole milk for instance or raw milk yes because it has a lot of good bacteria do you want to throw the the good bacteria out with the baby bathwater listeria bacteria? <laughs> well, you know what I mean? No. Yeah. I guess it's all in how things are handled it and is how the animals how are handled and yeah. all that. I mean, But look at this country and think about other countries and the food products they have there and the way they're manufactured mm-hmm. and processed. And that is a scary deal. Yeah, so no, one of our local meat processors just uh-oh, calls in uh-oh, and says, uh-oh. not all bologna are spleens and chicken feet. Uh-huh. There is good bologna, yeah. which is I'm sure what I eat. That's absolutely. That is just like steak ground up in a tube. I'm sure that's what I buy. So that makes my point. Why would you take a good steak and ground it up in a tube? I'm sorry, local listener. Very good. I'm a big fan of bologna. Steak is so expensive. I'm not grinding it up and putting it in a big tube. (laughs) I'm putting it on the grill. (laughs) But there is something about... A, a big fat lunch meat sandwich mm, made with. Yes. I happen to like a piece of lettuce and tomato, yes. and like you say, some with cheese. Some oh cheese yeah, with some nice like uh, Dijon bread. mustard or something. Mm. Oh wow, that is a good summer yeah. snack and yeah. a treat at our house because we're it not is. lunch meat people. It is a treat, it and, is a treat. It, and it's something yeah. that uh, is in a way it's it's got a lot of things on there that are good for you. Yeah, 
Indeed, indeed. What's up? Uh, what else is up in the news? Well, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, I've kind of been watching is the flu, and uh, mm-hmm. the two types, and mm-hmm. and everyone's as we've talked about before. Everyone's worry is that they will combine and mutate. And uh, so you wonder what CDC and mm-hmm. the others are planning on doing for the next flu vaccine. Mm-hmm. What are you guys going to put in that one? <laughs> you know, we <laughs> is it going to be yes. H1N974 or <laughs> SAR or what? What? What are you going to do? We had a friend with a son last week who had the flu, and I thought in the middle of the summer, the yeah. flu mm-hmm. had yeah. a friend last week that had strep throat. Yes, absolutely. La- those are winter time. Seem like yeah, winter time. Well, you think about them that way, or I, I do. I do too. Strep throat in the middle, middle of the summer. Yeah. And the flu in the middle of the summer. Not a pneumonia. So. I heard there were three or four admissions to the hospital the with other day pneumonia. with pneumonia. Yeah. yeah. So no, I think it's a myth that you know these winter time illnesses are only winter time illnesses. You get them. In fact, a lot of children will get uh, you know pretty significant viral illnesses, diarrheal illnesses. Um, yeah. in the summertime. In the summer. I don't know whether that's uh, probably because they're playing and communing and sharing, you know, sweaty body fluids mm-hmm. and so we forth. Had, so. We had that at our house last summer. So yeah. we had a run of that, yes. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> 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 Oops. <laughs> How's your little one doing, by the way? Everything doing well? Yes, yeah. all the staff She's infection all good cleared and up. Everything? Yes, That's just good. a pretty little You pink, had an odyssey with pretty that. Pretty little pink toe. That was a great de- detective story, though. I mean, it mm-hmm. took a lot of different docs looking mm-hmm. from a different angles mm-hmm. and finally, three, you know. Three different specialists. Got to it, Got yeah. to the bottom of it. Again, no pun intended. Oh, so. <laughs> good. Our pretty little toe is just pink oh, and healthy. Oh, my gosh. You're terrible. You're terrible. So the fair goes on this week. Yeah. You're going to have a booth. We're going to have we a booth are. there. And do come over to the art hall. You will see Bud or I from 4 to 8 every night in the art hall at the the hospital exhibit. We have all kinds of health information, hospital information, pens uh, to give out. and And a musical show and we dance. And Excuse me. <laughs> I have I haven't practiced. You You're gonna I dance? Didn't, wow. Didn't practice, bud. Turn on the yeah. buble and go to town with the dancing. That's <laughs> and, good. I and like also that. a plug for the fair. Off. For those who want to come out between eleven and one, I believe you do not have to pay admission fee, and oh, that is the right. fair board's opportunity to give you to come eat lunch at the sh- yeah. Cook's get that food. Yeah. They got some good food out there too, and I, I don't want to forget to tell everybody about the lunch and learn. That's on Thursday, July eighteenth, um, and it'll be in the. Uh, North Dining Room, that's the new North Dining Room, parking lot A. Don't forget to come for that. Uh, this month we'll welcome the SCH Cardiac Rehab clients under the supervision of uh, Chrissy Siegfried, RN. Oh, yeah. And our certified... Uh, I our talked to Chrissy yesterday. Cardiac Rehab. I was talking to her about just general things, how, you know, because she's, um, how long she's been doing the cardiac rehab thing now? Probably. A couple I years, say, right? Oh. I don't More? know. I would say she's probably at a year, 18-month yeah? okay. mark. And uh, took over from Shannon Quillen, of course, who had built a wonderful program there. And Chrissy carries on the tradition. And um, I was talking with her about it. I said, what is the most common thing that you hear from people who have suffered a heart attack? And now you're working with them and rehabbing them. And I love to go through the room there because she has the wall of fame mm-hmm. and the graduate mm-hmm. list. And yeah. everyone has their picture up there. And it's just, yeah. it's really refreshing. And you Plus walk through there. and amounts of equipment yeah. all over the place. And, and um and so I said, what is the most common thing that you hear that people talk about in terms of either changing their lifestyle or what they are doing different? Or what? She says, well, everyone tends to want to change their lifestyle now. But the most common thing that they talk about is, I wish I'd have known 25 years ago mm. that I shouldn't have been eating the way I was eating. Yeah. Okay. And, and I said, so it's not smoking? Well, no, I think people generally know that. That's common. Yeah. But, but there still is this sort of gap, this knowledge gap in terms of how you eat throughout your life. And not just when you're 55 and you have your heart right. attack, you know, but right. it, there's, there's this sort of buildup period that goes on asymptomatically that you don't know about. Yeah. And um, so I think that's why things like the diabetes support group yes. and the nutrition information that you get through Mary at the hospital yes. and some of yes. the stuff we try to share her on the show is so important because it, you know, you don't feel your arteries hardening. You don't oh. know that they're no. narrowing until you have an event. And people say, boy, that's the one thing I wish 25 years ago I'd have known that I shouldn't have been eating the white bread and the sugar so yeah. much. <laughs> the doughboy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> A little bit of that's okay now and then. I mean, you know, we just had a holiday. I have to admit, I fell off the wagon a little bit there. I'm a sucker for those. What do they call them? They're like the crispies. You know, they're like the, el- we used to call them elephant ears. The little flat pastries with the sugar cinnamon on top. They have them out here at Jay's. 
Oh, I don't know. Good. I call it leftover pie yeah. crust. That I oh, well, yeah, same deal. I don't know. <laughs> they're good. Well, well everyone has their weakness. <laughs> okay. you can, Now, remember, it's fair week. So if you're going to have a weakness, go ahead and splurge. Have yeah, a little fun a out there. And enjoy. Right. Get a funnel cake. Line. And then you can get back up on the wagon next week. Or better yet, walk around the fair and walk it off, right? Enjoy your there fun. You go. That's a way to get rid and of And good it. luck to all the fair goers and the fair givers down there. Absolutely. Remember to stay hydrated if you're really spending time out yes. there, either as a vendor or as a, a participant. We don't want to have anyone going down and have to say hi to Adam other than just waving because his people are usually at, I know the oh, events, they are there, right? They are down there. So, right and you'll see them always. around, yeah, yep, whether it's football game, uh, you know, out, at the, uh, out at the school or whatever. Hey, thanks for being with us this time. Remember this week, be well, share it with someone you love. Stay dry today. We'll see you next time on Healthy University. You're listening to the best in area news, weather, and sports on America's Best Country, 100.5 KMEM Memphis, Missouri.